Hi guys, welcome to another episode of How To Tutorials by Levolution Studios. This is Super Sam once again, and in this very episode, I'm gonna show you how you can constrain your props for animation in Blender. Let's get started. You have the character throwing a ball up and catching it at the same time. And this is the point where the constraint really shines for you. You see the contact between the props and the character's hand is very important. If your constraint is not solid, the hand will look like it's uh, going through the object and you don't want that in animation. You want everything to be firm and believable. Okay, so that's why you want to constrain your object or your props to your character. And um, two things are happening here the active constraint and the inactive constraint mode. Now, the constraint is active at every point where you see the props in contact with my character's hand, and then the constraint is disabled at every point where there is no contact between the props and my character's hand, and I'm gonna show you this in action. So, I would like to um, take out this action so i have this so nothing much is going on other than my constraints here mm, that's all and to to add your constraints is very simple create an amateur i created an amateur and i made the display of the amateur to be in form of a circle if you don't know how to do that we have a video that already um, addressed that so go check out the out tutorials on how you can get that done so I parented the the ball to the amateur that's why I can control it with this uh, bone okay and then under the bone properties here the the bone constraint properties here I added a child of okay so this child of constraint was what I added and then I defined what I want the object to be a child of as the hand of the character because I want the character to throw the ball into the hair using her left hand. So this is the name of the bone that I need. That's rig hand fk.l, L for left. FK means forward kinematics and hand is the name of the control. Then rig is the name of the amateur that I want to target, okay. So back to the ball controller, and the target here would be rig, because rig is the name of the amateur I want to target. Then under the rig, I need to target the hand FK. That's what you have in there for the bone, okay. And that's how you constrain. So now, nothing happening other than the ball constrained to the hand of the character going up and down. That's the first step. Now the second step is defining when you need the uh, constraint to be active or inactive. And that is where the beauty of animation shows forth. So in my case, on frame six, I want the ball to still have that constraint, but on frame seven, I want the constraint to go up because at this point, I want the ball to start uh, going into the air. So on frame six, I'm just gonna keyframe my influence, which is at one at the moment keyframe that, and on frame seven, I'm gonna take that to zero, and also drop a keyframe. But suddenly, my ball had left the initial position where it should be. So you need to uh, take back your object and reposition it to where you want it to be. But a faster way of doing so is, you can easily uh, click on, go to frame six, click on the ball, then shift S, uh, cursor, to select it, okay? And now you go back to um, frame seven, then select the control rig for the ball and shift S, selection to cursor. So that's gonna bring my ball to the position it was on frame six. That is closer to where the new location of the ball should be, okay? So from here, I can then easily make adjustments, okay? And I want that to be a bit to the tip. 
of our fingers because the ball is uh, ascending. Okay, so when you scrub between six and seven, you can see we have a problem. And that's because uh, the original position of the ball was not keyframed. So I'm just going to use Ctrl Z to go back immediately and set my keyframe here for the position, initial position of the ball. And so back on frame seven, where you have it at zero, I'm going to Shift S, selection to cursor, takes me closer to the position on frame six, and then change my ball position this time around to the tip of the character's fingers, and then set another keyframe. So when you move between frame six and frame seven, you can see it looks so smooth now, okay? So from here, constraint, frame seven, constraint at zero, and the ball should go up as well. So now I can G to push the ball up, set another key, the ball goes up, and then the ball comes down. Now, at this point, I want to retain this same position because it's going to be a loop. So I'm going to set down a keyframe there and copy this keyframe and go to uh, maybe frame 19 because that's where the loop is, so frame 19. And it takes me back to the original position of the ball. So now you have it go up and come down. Okay, so now at the moment it comes down, I want it to go back to the constraint mode. So that means on frame 18, I'm going to set a keyframe when my constraint is turned off and on frame 19, I'm going to set my constraint to be on. And now you have that effect, okay? So try it up. Okay, now at this point, you can decide to even fine tune your ball further. So I can, I can decide to go on frame five. I'm gonna set a keyframe there. And then on frame six, I want the ball to at least move a bit to the right hand side. I'm gonna change this to global for now. Just move it a bit to the right hand side and just. Okay, so in a way, um, kind of anticipating the, the ball ascending. Yeah, so it's smoother that way. Yeah. Okay, I think I still need to, I need to push the beat to the, to the right hand side, yeah, and move it up, set a keyframe there. Okay, so it feels smoother now. So that's what animation is all about. You check where you're coming from and where you're going to. Okay, so this way you have your ball constrained to the characters and, and the constraint turned off when the ball is in the air. So this is what I'm going to call it a wrap. I hope you've learned one or two things from this video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel if you've not done so. And until next time, keep your creativity blending.